I'm Kent Myers. I'm Mick Cornett, and it's time for the verdict. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy Law Firm presents The Verdict, an objective discussion of contemporary legal issues hosted by Kent Myers. And also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children and Delta Dental Plan of Oklahoma. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Today, the second of our two shows concerning HMOs. And let me introduce my co-host and one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. And Kent, you've titled today's show, HMOs, Now You See Them, Now You Don't. What do you mean by that? Well, our last show uh, dealt with uh, patients suffering, doctors being dissatisfied with HMOs. This show is going to deal with a little different subject, and that is that the HMOs are suffering. Uh, our economy uh, in this country has not been uh, really very good even before the September 11th tragedy, but it's getting uh, apparently worse, uh, uh, or at least not getting substantially better. And the health of the HMOs is directly tied to the health of the economy because, of, as our viewers that watched the first show know, the health of the employer or the employer being there and providing this benefit to the employee can be affected by the uh, how well the employer itself is doing. And so economic suffering in, in the economy generally can certainly quickly bleed down to uh, harm to the HMOs. And uh, I ask the question now and hope our guests will address. Ten years from now, will we even see HMOs? Will they be gone? Will they go out faster than they came in? Well, everybody's searching for an answer to the health care issue. Yes. And at, at one point, it was thought, well, maybe HMOs are the answer. And now we're thinking, well, maybe they're not. It's an interesting cycle. Yeah. Bring in HMOs, uh, bring the cost down. The costs go down so low, they can't make a profit, so they start <laughs> falling out. What happens when there are fewer HMOs? The cost goes right back up. With about a 20-year dip, we may be right back, uh, excluding inflation, we may be right back to where we were 25 years, 20, 25 years ago on health care costs. Well, let's get the show on the road. We'll bring in Brad Henry and Kevin Gordon. I would expect another lively discussion right here on The Verdict. In Oklahoma, there are more than 1,600 children waiting to be adopted. They're of all ages. And for many, home has been a source of pain and conflict. They've dreamed of finding a better life and a loving family. Consider adoption. For more information, call 1-877-OK-SWIFT or visit the website www.okdhs.org. Adopt. It may be the toughest job you'll ever love. I wasn't going to school because I was hanging with the wrong crowd. And one day, I was put into juvie for two stolen cars, robbery of a house, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And I was locked up. That's when I really realized that, I mean, it wasn't for me. Like, I was only in there two months, but to me, that was enough. It'd be better for me to stay in school, just get my education. I think I'm happier now. I know I'm happier now. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent, why don't you introduce our guests? Two return guests that we're very pleased to join us again. On my right is my colleague Kevin Gordon, a true expert in the healthcare area, particularly dealing with HMOs, a lawyer and teacher in the area, and uh, a lawyer who has successfully defended HMOs on occasion in court. Kevin, thanks so much for coming back. Thanks for having me. On my left, uh, for his third appearance on The Verdict, is the Honorable <laughs> Brad Henry, Senator from Shawnee District, uh, 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 economist in undergraduate school, and certainly the issues we're going to be talking about today are economic issues. 
uh, dealing in the healthcare area. Senator Henry, thank you for coming back again. Thank you, Ken. You're going to have to start paying me. <laughs> well, we, we're in the same shape as the HMOs. Um, I want to uh, start out by asking uh, you, Kevin, what is the status of the HMOs today? We know that the original purpose of an HMO was to reduce health care costs. We see something happening in the marketplace where HMOs come in, perhaps too many come in, and the price gets so low that HMOs <coughs> can't make it. Generally, what is your take on the economic health nationally? I want to hold off on Oklahoma specifically, but nationally, uh, what's your take on how the HMOs are doing? Well, I think from an economic point of view, Kent, that HMOs nationally are having a hard time. Uh, a lot of them uh, underbid the price of health care or underestimated what was going to happen with the price of health care a few years ago, and they're still suffering from that. The premiums are lower than the cost of care. And a lot of HMOs nationally are either losing money and, in many cases, uh, actually going out of business. Well, isn't one of the purposes of an HMO uh, to bring down health care costs? Or at least to control the increase in costs by active management of the care. Well, but, are you saying then that by their underbidding, they have been ineffective in, in bringing about that control? Well, I have to agree that been ineffective, but largely for factors beyond their control. Such as? Well, I think, I think of uh, the delivery and payment of health care as a pendulum. Uh, and in this case, the pendulum has swung toward the consumer or patient side after HMOs aggressively attempted to control costs through management techniques. Many members of the public got upset, and the legislatures and Congress enacted statutes mandating certain types of benefits, uh, allowing litigation that wasn't allowed before, and doing things that otherwise increased the cost beyond the expectations of the HMO. So when I say they underbid the cost of delivering care, they may have been making estimates based on what they believed the future held, but they were wrong. Well, Senator Henry, the legislature is supposed to respond to the will of the people. Uh, what I hear M Mr. Gordon saying is that maybe the legislature, either nationally or locally, has responded too well to the uh, <laughs> complaints of the, uh, the patients' constituents and uh, has enacted a scheme of laws that has, pr has uh, brought about the demise of HMOs. What do you think? Well, clearly, Kent, nationally speaking, in the last uh, 10 years, uh, through the legislatures throughout the nation, there have been some 900 or more laws passed to regulate HMOs, uh, from consumer report cards to right to sue laws that we discussed previously. Uh, so, you know, legislatures have a very difficult problem that we have to balance. We want to try to do things to lower the cost of health care, but not at the expense of, of quality care. We, we, we still want to maintain quality care. And as Kevin said, that pendulum of public opinion swings back and forth. Uh, several years ago, we were focusing more on lowering the cost of health care. Today, I think legislatures are focusing more on we need to provide quality care and access to care to people who need it. Well, you drive up to an intersection and you, and you can turn right or you can turn left, but you can't do both at the same time. Do we have that kind of a, a dilemma with health care in that we cannot ensure quality health care without allowing the cost of health care to increase dramatically? Well, I don't know that I would go that far. HMOs are necessary in our health care system because they provide an option to those who, who choose that option to pay lower co-payments and, and lower premiums or, or charges. Uh, but the cost of, of the cheaper health care is limited access. Uh, you don't have the access to any physician you want to go to. And, and that's just the way the system works. Uh, that doesn't mean that the health care is, is, will not be of good quality. Uh, but when, when you limit access to dramatically or you limit procedures, necessary procedures, that's when the problems arise and that's when we in the legislature hear from the, the consumers out there and we act accordingly. Uh, Kevin, 
uh, we've got competition uh, among HMOs that uh, is apparently pretty difficult to deal with if you're in the marketplace. Should that be limited and should government get involved somehow in, in a HMO bailout program? Oh, I don't think so, and I don't think the industry is asking for that. There were a, uh, this, this is an industry that is a relatively young industry, and there were a lot of startup HMOs, especially in other states. And as the market has evolved, a lot of those HMOs have naturally uh, not been successful and, and have gone out of business. But the problem I think we're talking about today is more fundamental, and that is the HMOs that were strong and viable financially are having problems. And I think that they're having problems in part because of the legislation and in part uh, just because health care costs have started to go back up in a spiral again. Well, Senator Henry, let me change the subject just a little bit. It seems to me a natural consequence of HMOs going out of business and health care costs going up is that employers are going to quit providing uh, benefits to employees and we're going to have more uninsured uh, Oklahomans. Let me bring up a, a graphic, if I may. Uh, it uh, reflects the uh, uninsured uh, Oklahomans, uh, percentage of residents reporting no health insurance in Oklahoma, and as you can see, that's 22 percent. The three states to our south have slightly higher numbers. The three states to our north have slightly lower numbers. But let's focus on Oklahoma and 22 percent. Is that an acceptable number, or is there any acceptable number or percentage? Ken, I don't think there is a, an acceptable number of, of uninsureds, at least not from, a, from my standpoint or a policy standpoint. Clearly, I mean, thank goodness we're doing better than, than many of the other states surrounding Oklahoma, but we're not doing as well as we should be. So we in the legislature have to uh, attempt to enact policy that will encourage employers to provide health benefits to their employees. Uh, that will enable those uh, through maybe high risk pools that we've established through the legislature will enable those who are high risk and who can't otherwise get health care to obtain health care and, and we're, we're attempting to do those things in the legislature but as you know it's very difficult and it's difficult to to predict uh, how just how the costs of health care change because they change so dramatically. Well, let me break in right there. We're going to interrupt and get us to a short break. You're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. Our guests are State Senator Brad Henry and Kevin Gordon. We're discussing HMOs. What's your verdict? Yeah, campfire is a lot of fun. You get to make some friends. You get to do some cool stuff. Campfires for boys too, not just girls. But hey, campfires definitely for kids. So call the campfire office nearest you to join in on the fun. Cause let's face it, you're not getting any younger. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leaving it fourth and seven on the Tiger. the shopping spree of your dreams to get the savings of a lifetime. For just $50, you can buy this card that will save you hundreds. Here's how it works. The Care Card is good for 20% off every purchase you make for a week starting November 3rd. So start your holiday shopping a little earlier this year and watch it pay off at more than 125 stores and restaurants. Proceeds benefit Family and Children's Services and the Simon Estes Educational Foundation. To get your Care Card, call 587-9471. Look at me. At me. At me. At me. At me. Just someone from Noble. Hydro. Oklahoma City. Winoka. Lawton, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State University saw. A leader. A reporter. A pilot. A Rhodes Scholar. A traitor. Who's inside of you? Come discover yourself at... O.S.U.
We're back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers this week. Our discussion is with Brad Henry and Kevin Gordon, and we're discussing HMOs and their financial futures. Yes, uh, we talked uh, in the first segment about HMOs generally or nationally, and I want this time to focus in on Oklahoma. Uh, I, I don't think we're seeing a different uh, situation here in Oklahoma than we have seen nationally. I want to call up a graphic of recent numbers that have been published uh, on how HMOs are doing in Oklahoma. As you can see, the HMOs, uh, while you can't probably see the names <coughs> at the bottom, you can certainly see those red lines and they come way down into the loss column. And I have totaled those, and those losses total $27.3 million this last year, uh, divided among those HMOs. And then to the right of those, in the gray numbers, uh, are the only two HMOs that make a profit, and they only showed a $6.3 million profit. So there's over a uh, $21 million loss among the reporting HMOs, and as a matter of fact, the one longest red line was Healthcare Oklahoma, who has announced that they are leaving the business uh, shortly after the first of the year, and their uh, members or patients will have to be replaced elsewhere. Uh, Senator Henry, uh, that doesn't look very good uh, for the future of HMOs in Oklahoma. What do you think about that? Well, I would agree, Kent. I mean, you, you saw the graphic there. Of the 10 HMOs in Oklahoma, eight are not making a profit. Eight are losing money. And, and that is not a good sign at all. I think it's a function of a, a number of things. I think generally it's a function of, of the current status of the economy nationwide. I mean, this is not a, a trend that, is, that, that we see just in Oklahoma. It's, it's yeah. a national trend. Uh, and it's also a function of... Uh, competition among the HMOs and, and simply uh, maybe miscalculating when they set their prices, as Kevin said earlier. Uh, traditionally, I think, uh, it takes an, a new HMO five to ten years to really get it figured out and make a profit. I can't tell you exactly why that is, but that's, that's just, just the way it seems to be on a national scale. Kevin, uh, we see the numbers. They are what they are. Uh, if they're accurate, it is a pretty bleak picture for, the, uh, for most of the HMOs in Oklahoma. Uh, what are we to do? Well, I think it's a, it's a bleak picture uh, across the country. But it's not just HMOs that are, are losing money because of the cost of health care. It's all insurers. And this is a cyclical thing to an extent, but all HMOs and insurers are faced with spiraling health care costs. We're back at the point we were in the 70s when the move for HMOs as a method of controlling costs came into vogue. Uh, there are a lot of reasons. It's, it's a very complicated issue about why health care costs have started back up. Some of the factors have to do with consolidation of health care providers. Hospitals are merging. They've got more clout in dealing with the HMOs and their contracting. The population is aging. And then there have been, as I said before the break, the uh, legislative and regulatory efforts to limit the ability of HMOs to really manage care and to control costs that have caused costs to spiral. Well, would you expect to see some significant consolidation in Oklahoma? In other words, uh fewer and fewer HMOs in the year or so coming? I think that, the, that uh, without predicting the demise of any HMO, sure. it's, uh, it's likely that uh, HMOs will continue to have a hard time making ends meet in Oklahoma, and uh, some of them may choose not to serve certain markets. Uh, for instance, state and governmental employees are insured by HMOs. They're, they receive benefits through HMOs through a state plan. Some HMOs have chosen to drop out of that market and not participate in the state plan. I think that kind of thing, that kind of adjustment of the population they serve is foreseeable. Uh, Senator Henry, we saw recently in the newspaper the longest red line, Healthcare Oklahoma, announcing publicly that they're leaving the, leaving the industry. And the, in the uh, article, it was uh, indicated that Healthcare Oklahoma was principally uh, owned by Integris uh, Health in uh, Oklahoma City and Mercy Hospital, two of the biggest, if not the two biggest, hospitals uh, in Oklahoma City. Now, if the people that, are, that provide the service on a daily basis can't make it in the industry, 
who can? Well, Kent, that's a good question. Uh, clearly, there are profitable HMOs in Oklahoma and nationally, and I and you know I can't respond directly to the the cause of of the, the loss of some of the HMOs in Oklahoma, but uh, there are good models where it's like Alan Greenspan taking bankruptcy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I don't know that I can. I don't know that anyone can answer that question, but. Uh, clearly, and that's been part of the, the problem in the interplay between the public uh, and the HMOs. You've got to have some business sense in operating an HMO, but you've also, you, you have to have that medical background. And, and literally up until just a few years ago, uh, we did not require the directors of HMOs in Oklahoma to have a medical degree. We do now. but. They need to have some business acumen also. I'd like to have each of our guests give a kind of final summation, and I think it might be interesting, maybe even fun for us because we don't have to do it, but to predict the future of HMOs. Kevin, where are we going to be in five or ten years from now? Well, Nick, it's, it's always hard to predict the future, and so much of it is subject to change based on this pendulum swing that we've talked about. I guess if I had to make a prediction, I would say that health care costs are going to continue to increase at double-digit rates. They did last year. They are this year. The rates in Oklahoma for public employees are going up anywhere from 5 to 40 percent this year. And I think we're going to see a trend that way until the pendulum has swung back the other way and people are willing to accept some controls on the kinds of access that they have to care. Not lack of quality care, but where everybody can't make the decision that they want to go to this doctor right now and that's automatically going to be paid for. We're simply not in a position, in my opinion, as a society where we can devote those kinds of resources to health care. It would be a huge percentage of our gross national product. Maybe we're going to go to a Hillary Clinton kind of national health care plan if the HMOs and, and health insurance companies can't make it. Senator Henry? Well, you know, I certainly agree with, with Kevin. I believe that HMOs are here to stay. Uh, it, it, you know, some are going to make it, some aren't. But I believe the concept uh, is here to stay. Primarily, is that the economist in you coming out that, that's still the best uh, method? I think so. Yeah. I mean, primarily because healthcare costs are going to continue to rise, and and there will be more of a movement, I think, uh, nationwide, but certainly in Oklahoma. And we're a little bit behind the curve in Oklahoma, where uh, only about 14 percent of our population is actually enrolled in HMOs, our insurable population, uh, versus nationally it's closer to 30 percent. So I think as health care costs continue to rise, we will actually probably see more of a movement towards health uh, maintenance organizations and, and managed care in Oklahoma and nationally. Uh, obviously, something is going to have to be done at some point. Politically, it's so difficult, and we all remember what happened in 1993 when uh, Hillary Clinton and others attempted to change dramatically on the national scene our health care delivery system. But I think it is ultimately going to have to come from the national level. I mean, if we're going to do something, it's going to have to be done in a uniform level nationwide, not to say that we have a socialist type of system, but uh, I don't know what the answer is, but, but the answer is going to have to come from a national level, I believe. And we're going to have to let that be the final word. Senator Henry, Kevin Gordon, thank you both for coming by. Kent and I'll be back with a few final thoughts when we return. You're watching The Verdict. Sun. Between this, smile, honey, keys, and this, you open this door right now. Go away, just leave me alone. What is wrong? Even the best you kids can use some help. Me. Why won't you talk to me? This is where we come in. Youth Services.
Giving teens a place to turn. child you don't have to be perfect you just have to be yourself which by the way is pretty good do good mentor a child call 1877 be a mentor Another edition of The Verdict. Today, our conversation concerned HMOs. Uh, pretty somber conversation, actually. Uh, much like our economy today, uh, the uh, health maintenance organization was brought in through Oklahoma to try to bring down health care costs. They're failing. Uh, the logical result would uh, lead one to believe that maybe that's going to result in a greater escalation of, of health care costs than might normally be the case. Uh, the consequence of that is more and more Oklahomans will uh, become uninsured, which brings about a very high social cost mm -hmm. uh, to all of us. Uh, I'm reminded of a phrase I saw on billboard one time, although I'll apply it to an HMO. Uh, Mick, I think we can uh, fairly ask uh, if, the, if please, the last HMO in Oklahoma will turn out the lights. <laughs> and we'll see you next week on The Verdict. This program was brought to you by Crow and Dunleavy, a professional corporation. And also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children. And Delta Dental Plan of Oklahoma. <laughs>